In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you, so make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. Wrong way! Welcome to the Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. They got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire where the state motto is still live free or die. It is not big government or bust, at least not yet. Uh, It is still live free or die. It is Tuesday, August the 11th in the year of our Lord 2015. The number that you can call this evening if you wish to join me here live on the program is toll-free 603-835-3224. Again, that's 603-835-3224. And uh, talk to me about the things that 
I'll be discussing with you tonight. I know one of the subjects <clears throat> hot on everybody's lips is um is the the Megyn Kelly and Donald Trump uh, battle. Now I, I know there are people out there trying to speculate. Well, who's going to win this one? Who's going to well? Yeah, I I know Megyn has got the megaphone because you know she's on Fox. And, you know, she has her own show and she can say whatever she pretty much wants to say. And then again, we know that the Donald is obviously the Donald. He's big, brash, bold, uh, knows how to get publicity and knows how to get, uh, you know, knows how to build a brand. His name is a brand. Um, by the way, I would, uh, I, you know, one of the things I, I have been studying uh, I'm going to digress here for a second, folks. Be, what, why? Because I can, because it's my program. But uh, just always, all, whatever I have to tell you, even when I digress, there is a point to my digression. So, you, I, you know, for those of you who, who are tuning in for the first time or who haven't been following me for, for a long period of time, I digress quite often. But the digression always helps me make my point. So just sit back, relax, pay attention. And for those of you on the left, you know, if you pay attention and actually keep your mouth shut for a little while, you'll actually learn something from me. Just thought I'd put that out there for you. But Donald Trump is a master of brand building and brand recognition. He has got one of the most valuable brands on the planet. Now, understand, the brand is his name, Trump. I mean, it, I, his brand has been, his name has been, well, his brand too, has been on all kinds of stuff. I, I know we like to think of just, uh, there is a Trump champagne. Uh, not too long. Now, I think it was limited production because this, like I said, this guy is, he's a master of brand building and he doesn't, he like wants people to understand and realize that when his name gets put on something, it's top of the line luxury. So it, it, it is never going to be the cheapest stuff out there. Even if he just puts his name on a tie, it isn't going to be the cheapest tie in the rack. No, this is, you know, he likes top of the line luxury types of stuff and he puts his name on luxury types of stuff and he always has since the late 80s. And he has got one of the most recognizable brand names out there and he, he's a real estate mogul. Look, when, when the man puts his name on the top of a building, it is almost guaranteed to sell out. Uh, you know, if it's gonna, if it's going to be, you know, uh, a building of condos and, you know, the, the Trump puts his name on top of that building, it is almost a guarantee it is going to sell out. Why? Because people have come to recognize the Trump name and the Trump brand as being top of the line, as being ultra luxurious, as being top quality. People do not get gypped when something has a Trump name on it. So he's very good at building and maintaining a brand. And I had to, I've been studying him a little bit on his on how he built his brand, his name. And and and, and I'm I'm look, this is what you do in life when you want to become a success, you study people who have gone before you, who have gotten to places that you want to be. Now, I'm not saying that I want to be a, a multi-billionaire real estate mogul. Although if that's the direction I wanted to go, I would damn sure get there because I follow and I study the people who've already made it before me and, and I learn what their mistakes are before I make them. So I don't make them. And so I'm studying him, um, uh, Trump and how he's building or how he built and maintains his brand, which is his name. And, and quite frankly, uh, I, I'm putting it out there. I'm going to be frank. That's what I'm doing with my name. Now, are you going to see the Eccles name on top of skyscrapers all over the world? I'm not that into real estate in real estate development. So I, I doubt it. I doubt that I'll do that. Um, but 
You know, when it comes to, to, to building something and becoming a success at something, you, I always try to look at those who've come before me. And sure, I'm going to do it my way. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to, I'm going to imitate, but not copy. See, there's a difference. Like, uh, you know, the, the, the people that in this industry, broadcast industry, people who I am trying to emulate, but not copy. You know, like Rush Limbaugh, the, the daddy of all daddies when it comes to, I probably shouldn't say daddies, but the king of all radio talk show host kings. Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, you know, even to a certain degree, uh, uh, Michael Savage, I emulate them, but I'm not trying to, co- can you imagine if I tried to copy, you know, the, the, the top five syndicated talk show hosts, this would be one confusing show to follow, but I can take what I believe are the best parts of each of them and emulate them and make them my own so I can give you something totally unique and something totally different. And I think I do that very well, and I'll continue doing that. But this goes the same for, um, you know, when, when you're trying to run a political campaign, obviously Trump has to uh, build his name recognition in, in the political sense. Uh, but he already has a big name out there, so he's you know he he's not starting behind the eight ball. But by the same token, you know Megyn uh, Kelly is no slouch when it comes to name recognition either. But Trump is a little bit bigger than she is, even though she's got the forum. But see, now I told you all that would kind of rub run together, didn't I? You know, you do is just pay attention. And here, here it comes. Here comes putting it together. They're not saying they're sorry to each other for what they said to each other during the debate and after. And frankly, I don't expect, I did not expect either one of them to apologize. And, and you know, and that's a good thing because you know they're supposed to be more conservative. And conservatives, they, you know, just because you say you're sorry doesn't really mean that you are. And I'm tired of all this mamby pamby. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. Oh, bull crap. Megyn Kelly meant to go after Trump, and she's not apologizing for it because she meant to do that. Donald Trump meant to fully and completely and thoroughly insult. Megyn Kelly, and he's not backing down from that. Uh, They both did what they fully intended to do. So why should they apologize for being themselves? Uh, You know, Megyn Kelly can't help help herself. I mean, if you've ever seen uh, her, any of her, her, her news programs, even, you know, the Kelly file before the Kelly, well, she was on some other Fox uh, programs before the Kelly file, she was very aggressive, you know, you can agree with the questions or not. You can agree with her tact or not. But she's always been, as far as I, from the day that I can first remember, you know, a few years ago, uh, she's always been an aggressive type of, of, of reporter, I guess. Is that what you call them? Uh, I, I wouldn't say that she's a journalist. I don't know if she is or isn't. I really don't watch her that often. Uh, but she's always been very aggressive. And frankly, if you're going to go after the Donald, who is also... Very aggressive, and very brash, very big, and very bold. You've got to be a bit tough and brash and bold yourself. You can't be wimpy. And, and frankly, you know, Megyn Kelly. I don't. You can say whatever else you want to say about her, but that that woman ain't wimpy. She is not a wimpy woman. Absolutely. And, and <laughs> I, I know some people are going to say, "Well, are you calling her masculine?" Absolutely not. And Megyn Kelly's a fem. Uh, well. I shouldn't say feminist, but she's she's feminine. But she's a she's 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 a tough feminist. If that's you know conservative feminist, if that's what you want it well, you know she's not. I wouldn't. I don't know her personal politics, but as far as her reporting and what she does and says, I wouldn't exactly classify her as a full constitutional conservative. She might be, uh, but you know just just based on her her TV persona, I would say that that's not the case. Uh, but you know, maybe she tries to be a bit more fair 
and balanced, and that's why she comes out uh, comes across as being a little bit more um, uh, less than than constitutional conservative. But if she's gonna, you know, she she's a tough, brash woman. Yeah, you know, well, it, yeah, I'm gonna. She's she's rather easy on the eyes too. At least I think so. And I'm, and I'm not a huge fan of blondes, but I think she's easy on the eyes. And, and that that's not being sexist. And I know some some of you lefties out there, political correct idiots, are probably going to say that. Oh, yes, being sexist, right? No, it's not. Me- Megan, I'm you know I'm a I'm a guy. She's a girl. I I can recognize beauty when I see it. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. She's a pretty lady. She really is. And, uh, you know, she's got some brains in her head that she uses. Kind of strange for a blonde. Aren't blondes all supposed to be ditzy? You know, ditzy blonde. <laughs> well, you know what? She's on the right side of the political aisle. So, therefore, she's not going to be ditzy. All the It seems all the blonde ditzes are on the left side of the political aisle. Uh, hey, Democrats, I'm sorry. You guys have the, you know, you've got the lock and key, it seems like, on, on ditziness. Um. Really, it really is. But they're they're not apologizing to each other. I don't expect them to. In fact, if they did, I would probably respect the one who apologized less. And and I I kind of respect them both more for standing their ground. You know, you can say what you want. Maybe make Megan Kelly was wrong. I don't. I don't necessarily think so. And, you know, you know, they have this, you know, there's this always this notion, well, she just said it wrong. Well, that's a bunch of bullpucky. You know, I, I, why do you have to, t- look, I don't tiptoe, uh, tiptoe around issues. If somebody doesn't like the way I said something, well, for the most part, if it's, if it's not a personal issue, you know, you know, one on one personal it has nothing to do with you know the profession or anything, uh, business. If it's just personal, then that's a different story. But if it's anything but personal, and it, th- somebody doesn't like the way I said it, I just say too damn bad. That's not my problem or my issue. It, it, just like if I don't like the way somebody else says something and it says something in a professional, non personal manner, that's not necessarily their problem. That's mine. Well, you know if they. If, if they want to be a little bit bigoted, that's a different story, but that, that's personal. That's not a professional type of thing. But I'm, you know, I, I don't get into this. Well, you got to say you're sorry every time you offend somebody. Oh, hell no. I, I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for it. it. You know what? I've, <laughs> I've always looked at it this way. I have always said, if I don't offend somebody, I am probably not doing my job. You know, plain and simple. If I don't offend somebody, I'm not doing my job. And, and I don't, I don't look go, go out there to try to fully, uh, you know, try on purpose to fully offend someone. But I know that my beliefs and what I espouse is going to offend a lot of people on the left. Oh, it's gonna, and it's gonna offend a lot of people in the center. And I don't apologize for that. If you are offended by what I say, well, if I'm telling the truth, and I'm coming from a place of historical fact and logic, and you are still offended, that's not my problem. You gotta check yourself on that one. So I think Megan and Donald check themselves. And they said, you know what? They said to each other, not my problem if you're offended. And I don't... Yeah, they both were offended by what each other did and said to each other. Absolutely. You know, for them to say that they're not, they were offended. You know, probably rightfully so. But that's the game of politics. And both of them are grown-ups. And both of them are, 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 you know, they're tough. And they can handle it. And, I, you know, you have all these people running around out there trying to defend Megan and, or defend Donald. And I'm like, you know what? They don't need your defense, really. You know, just, 
Yeah, as as the um, comes across as from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air all those years ago. Mind your business. That that's all. Mind your business, because yeah, you know, those two will straighten out whatever differences they may have, and maybe they won't. But they don't need us out there to defend them. Yeah, not these two. Absolutely not. They really don't. Um, anyway, folks, we got a, a a lot of other stuff to discuss this evening. Got some Hillary stuff. Yeah, we're going to talk about some Hillary stuff. Uh, uh, Scott Walker is speaking of offending people. Scott Walker and Hillary uh, got into a little tit for tat today. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, but there's something that's kind of interesting that I heard today about Rick Perry. Now, Rick Perry has stopped paying his staff. Now, if he does that, that means only one thing, that he, that his campaign is running out of money. And he's running out of money because nobody's backing him. And nobody's backing him, and I've said this, is because he's he's gone into this wimpy, mamby-pamby, moderate type of position. You know, and he was constantly trying to, you know, well, this is not how you act as being president. You're not presidential, Donald Trump. And he was ripping into Donald Trump left and right while ignoring the polls. Of people, uh, of you know, people supporting the Donald and liking what he said, and that was a death knell for. Rick. I, I got to tell you, Rick, I'm not so sure that Rick Perry, and I'm probably going to get some some hate mail for this, but I got to tell, I'm not so sure. I don't know why Rick Perry got into the race. I don't think his heart was in it. I re- he always looked like he was tired. I mean, and, and not not from. Not from running a very tough, hard campaign. He just looked like he was tired. He looks like he's tired. Like he just wants to retire. And get out of the public limelight or what have you. Maybe just do a few speeches here and there. Possibly earn half a million dollars like the Clintons per speech. But I just don't think that his heart was in this campaign. I really, really don't. Now, I could be wrong. But just by listening to him and seeing his his facial expressions and 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 and, and paying attention to some of his appearances, uh, uh, you know, when he's out in public, uh, the man just looked tired. Like his heart was, and his responses to to Trump, I, that really wasn't Rick Perry four and eight years ago. I don't know where this Rick Perry came from. That's why I say I think he's just tired. I think he's just politically and mentally fatigued. And I am sure I'm going to offend some people out there. But you know what? Too damn bad. That's not my problem. I call it like I see it. Uh, now, now, will this mean the end of of the Perry campaign? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Will this be? Will Perry be the first one to drop out? At this particular juncture, I am not going to try to determine that. Because it really doesn't matter who drops out first. It really doesn't matter who drops out last. Because you know, we're, we're going to end up with a candidate that we end up with. No matter who it is, we're going to have one. So it really doesn't matter who leaves the race first. Now, whoever leaves first may shock some people and may not shock others. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there's a couple of, I'm not going to say who they are. There's a couple of candidates that I would not be shocked if they were to leave first. And I got to tell you, well, I can tell you one, I already said it. I think Rick Perry is on, is on that list, is on that short list of being first to leave. And again, I, like I said, I could be wrong. I just think the man is tired. He doesn't seem to have the same fire in the belly that he once had. And... Uh, so I, I don't, you know, with, with the campaign, maybe he had to because with campaign laws the way they are, you know, and, and the and what you're supposed, to, how you can get your hands on the money for personal use after a camp, after you no longer campaign, uh, maybe maybe he had to run and, and and use up the money somehow. I I don't I don't I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know what it was what was in his mindset. Um, but there, uh. There is something out there um, from from the Perry camp. What's actually happening is 
uh, opportunity and freedom, uh, I guess, as a pack, uh, steps in to carry, uh, carry Perry's payroll load. Uh, and this is actually from uh, the IJReview.com. Uh, Rick Perry's campaign has stopped paying staff, but a super PAC will pick up the slack. Welcome to the Wild West of presidential campaigns in 2016. Well, this is, you know, this is what McCain-Feingold gave us, so it's not really the Wild West. Now, the Pro Perry Super PAC, Opportunity and Freedom, will run ads and, and uh, a ground game for Perry so his campaign can be mean and lean. Whatever that means, you can't. You know, if you're going to win something, you can't be you can't be lean. You mean mean, but you can't be lean. But you know, he um, uh, candidly says uh, Austin uh, Barber, a super PAC advisor. He told uh, IJ that candidly, we saw the campaign finance report a couple of weeks ago, and knew. He said we sort of read the writing on the wall. We knew that we had to move forward. And do our own thing. So they're going to be out there campaigning for uh, Perry, um, you know, as it were, for Mr. Perry. Poor guy. But it, I, you know what? I'm just I'm sorry. I just I think he's I think he's mentally. Yeah, he's probably not physically fatigued. You know, he's you know, he's fairly well, you know, his 60s, right? Fairly young guy. I just think he's mentally and politically tired. I think he's mentally and, and, and politically exhausted. And I don't think that, you know, he was really into running in the first place. And may, maybe people talked him into it. Hey, run, Rick, run. And he thought, okay, I'll give it one more college try. But giving it a college try really doesn't mean that your heart is into it. And he'll, he'll be back, but... Somehow, I doubt it. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just... can do is get a home warranty from american residential warranty their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break and they will break and at the worst possible time call american residential warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning call american residential warranty right now ask how you can save up to 50 percent on washer and dryer coverage just call one 800 800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution. takes is five minutes with power swabs in five minutes you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth and in seven days six shades it's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers the secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by dr martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth best of all there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done to try power swabs risk-free call 1-800-291-5140 that's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. sends you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please, call or go online right now. You're listening to The Rod Echo Show. Just in across my newsfeed. Oh, by the way, if you want to call me here on the show, the number is toll free 603-835-3224. This just in across my newsfeed for being reported on by uh, townhall.com. Uh, according to Matt Vespa over on Town Hall, uh, Hillary is to hand over her private email server to the Department of of justice, uh, after previously refusing to turn over her private email server to an independent third party for analysis, Hillary Clinton plans to hand it over to the Department of Justice. Now, I thought that the, that it went missing. Weren't we told that it went missing? It was destroyed or something like that. But uh, anyway, Clinton has instructed her attorney to hand over her private email server and the thumb drive of all her work-related emails to the Justice Department in an effort to blunt an expanding probe into the use of a private email account. Now, one has got to wonder if this, in order to blunt all of this investigation, expanding probe and all that kind of stuff, if that was really the case, why didn't she just do this months ago? What was she holding on to? What was, what was, you know, I don't, maybe the Democrats aren't as, aren't as, um, aren't as fast as the Iranians and, and she couldn't erase everything and clear everything that, that was damning, uh, damaging to her in 24 days and she just needed, I don't know, 24 months or something. But, um, you know, I, it's just a logical question. What took her so long? Why, why did the American people, and the political system, our polit- have to go through all of this. Was she trying to was she trying to to reach some sort of backdoor deal with the Obama administration? Hey, hey, you know she's probably coming. Hey, Barack, buddy, you know I'm gonna get I'm gonna finally give you this thing, but you've got to do me a favor and like you know all the bad stuff, just hush it up and cover it up so I can keep running for president. Okay, well, Hillary, I'm not gonna say that I really like you. But, you know, if it's going to do our party or make me look bad, then I'll help you out because I can't look bad. So if you're going to make me look bad 
And uh, if you're, if, uh, uh, if there's something in there that is going to make me look bad and, uh, you know, get, get people more fodder to try to impeach me, then, yeah, I'll help you out. You know, uh, you know, d- d- we'll help each other. How's that? Now, unfortunately, you know, th- that may mean that uh, you get to come in after me, and I don't want that but because uh, I'd rather have Biden. But, you know, Joe's a good boy, and, uh, you know, he'll fall on the sword. He'll understand because it's about, it's about my legacy. It's about me. And if your server is going to help me, then I will help you. So turn it over. Uh, I wouldn't say that that is not far from plausibility. In fact, it's very plausible. Uh, there, there must have been some negotiations going on in, in behind the scenes. Because other, why would this woman hold on to this thing after it was known what she did for so long? She was, she needed an ace. She needed something to negotiate with. Don't doubt me, folks. Don't doubt. And look, now, now I'm sure some people are going to think um, that uh, that now we're going to get to the bottom of this because now Hillary's turning, you know, voluntary. It, it, look, if she's voluntarily turning this over, you better believe that this machine has been whitewashed somehow. And that stuff that she really, you know, most of the stuff that she really doesn't want you or anybody else to see is uh, is not going to be seen. And, you know, the, the, look, there are, even with modern, for you know, computer forensics and, and things like, you know, for, you know, is it called computer forensics? Hard drive for whatever. Uh, you know, we have their software, powerful software and, and, uh, and uh, tricks of the trade that, that can go into a hard drive and recover data that has been erased and, and to a certain point it can recover even uh data that has been thoroughly erased and written over but there are methods again you know there's other software out there there are methods that basically whitewash you know whatever on the hard drive that you want whitewashed and that can never at least with today's technology can never recover it and uh, sometimes you know when you, if you have if you have that many emails, uh, this is where time comes in. If you have that many emails on your server, it takes people time to go back and read all of those and and try to determine which ones are good, which ones are you know so so. Maybe you know give them a little bit of piece of red meat and you know then they'll eventually go away. And which ones are all oh, hell no, nobody else can see this. So they had to go through these, you know, probably had to go through the, uh, these emails one at a time in order to figure out which ones were that already weren't, you know, already weren't already known about, you know, because you can't they can't erase something that somebody already knows about and has already spilled the beans on because then they'll then people know, well, geez, you erase that. Um, but so they have they had to do things carefully. I, if this is now I'm just speculating on, on what they were doing with this machine all this time. They had to go in there and try to find out, you know, where. And again, you know, they 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 also had to look at, well, <laughs> what other machines across the planet uh, might some of these emails appear on that the govern our government can get get a hold of? Because again, uh, you you, you got to be careful. About because if they find if we find out that you know that she's destroying it, well, this is going to be put in some really big trouble if she's destroying evidence. Uh, so they have to. When I say whitewash, they have to clean everything that is harmful to her that they can possibly clean and get away with. That's what I mean by whitewashing. They 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 can't clean stuff that's damaging to her that people already know about or can be recovered by some other method. They know that, that, look, they're not that, Hillary may not be the brightest, you know, bulb in the chandelier, but she's got people that, that support and work for her that are pretty damn smart, and they can figure this stuff out. But that takes time. Now you now are you starting to see, now again, this is speculation. I don't have an inside scoop, but logically speaking, in order to whitewash something with that much information, it takes time time and that could be why she didn't want to turn it over 
because she needed the time in order to do what was necessary. Now, you know, I, I could be wrong at it. I don't know. I'm not in, within the D.C. I'm not within the Beltway. I don't keep my, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, a reporter do, looking into this thing. You know, I don't have inside sources. Uh, maybe I should start cultivating inside sources. I, I Well, I, I don't want to be beholden to anybody. That's for damn sure. Uh, but sometimes, you know, having having an inside source is probably not a bad idea. So maybe I need a couple of inside sources. But I, I don't want to get to, well, hey, Rod, who's your source? Because the last thing I want is, you know, you know, a bunch of guys in, in uh, all dressed out in tac- tactical gear busting down my door, door trying to find out what I, you know, wh- who I know, why I know, where I know, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and trust me, you know, they, they would... <laughs> You know, when somebody wants to protect their secrets, they will go to any length that they have available to them and use anything that they have available to them to do that. It's not that I'm afraid of them. I just, you know, if if I don't have to encounter them, then I won't. You know, so, but um, in in any event, um, yeah, th- this is, I'm just speculating as to why it is taking her soul, and, and and if it's done right, it's going to be very difficult to detect that she eliminated stuff that was damaging to her. If it's done right, it's going to be very difficult to detect if they even detected it at all. I'm, I know some people are saying, "Well, that's just not possible." Yeah, anything's possible. You know, it's it's really it's. You can say it's like it's like a, a photoshopping your email. Basically, is what she's out there. What she was probably doing was photoshopping her email. That's the best way I can explain it for people to understand. What do you mean, not that white what photoshopping? Oh, okay, I get it now. Um, so that is the case. Uh, is she is is she a photo? Did she? I should say. If she's now she's going to turn it over. Uh, did she Photoshop uh, her server? Plain and simple. Anyway, that that was just across, comes across my uh, newsfeed, but that isn't where I wanted to to to, to start off. Uh, Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is. Drawing some big crowds out there. Bernie Sanders. Um, I, 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 I know a lot of people are saying, well, this is kind of interesting. How is he doing this? And they're talking about, you know, he's getting all this support and this is really good for the process and, and you know, not good for Hillary, but blah, 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 not good for Hillary. And all that kind of, and I got to tell you, look, this guy... As Sean Hannity, Hannity puts it, he's an old curmudgeon. But that's not the bad part. There are a lot of older guys. You know, what, what is Sanders, 78? He's up there. Uh, there are a lot of old, well, I don't know. I, I would I would tend to think that John McCain is an old curmudgeon. There are a lot of curmudgeons out there. So it's not, there's not necess, uh, nothing necessarily wrong with being a curmudgeon. You, you know, you're just old. Happens. You know, I'm, you know, when, when, if I live to see 78 or 80, I will probably be referred to as an angry old black man. And I probably will be an angry old black man. I don't, it, you know, that's a ways away, but who knows? Maybe when I'm 80, I will be that way. Uh, it just depends on what happens between now and then. So there's nothing wrong with being in old, yeah, I'll probably end up being an old curmudgeon. There's nothing wrong with being a curmudgeon, not really. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have the uh, the wherewithal and the temperament to to be in politics anymore. But there's other than that, there's nothing wrong with being a curmudgeon. The point is, is that we have all of these people support that seem to be supporting Sanders via the thousands of people that show up to his events. And some people are trying to make the correlation. Well, oh my God, this is terrible. 
Because this is how Obama went. Obama started gathering these huge crowds. And he ended up being elected. Could this be what Sanders is doing? Oh, no, 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 no. This can't happen. I don't think that that's a possible. Is it plausible? Yes. Is it possible? Uh, probably not. I don't. I, look, if Bernie Sanders. The, the, the problem I have with all these people showing up to a Bernie Sanders event, listening to this guy talk. I don't care if they're young, middle-aged, or old. It doesn't matter. All these thousands of people. My problem with this is is that it's scary simply because of the correlation between Sanders and Obama. And, and, and it has nothing to do with Hillary. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm really going to tell you this. Bernie Sanders' pop- uh, popularity really does not have a lot to do with Hillary Clinton. It really doesn't. Now, are, are they are the Democrats looking for somebody other than Hillary? Because, you know, some of them think that Hillary might be damaged goods and might not be able to go all the way, might be indicted or go to jail, what have you. That is a possibility. Yes, that is there. And a lot of people are probably thinking about that. But even if there was somebody else in the race who was of, quote unquote, Hillary's caliber without the baggage, recent baggage. Bernie Sanders would still be igniting the number of people and crowds that he is currently getting. And this reflects and is very similar to Barack Obama. This is the scary part. Now, this does not mean that that these people are going to follow through and pull the lever for Bernie Sanders for president. However, the, the very fact that they are showing this guy love and support and attending his events and that these are the same kind of people that, that supported Obama. Uh, basically, it is. It's because the reason why it's scary is simply because these people are supporting or showing support and love for somebody who very much professes socialism. Obama does not deny he's, that he's a socialist. He doesn't deny it. Oh, uh, and, and, and Sanders... He doesn't deny it either. In fact, he wears that title with a badge of honor. So we have all these people who are not necessarily support in, in support of Bernie Sanders, the person, but they're in support of his ideas, which is socialism. Because this is, you know, you want to you want to talk about being extreme lefty and being a total socialist, you know, a uh, uh, poster child. That's Bernie said. You think Obama's damaging to the Constitution? You wait till you, till you get a President Sanders. It'll it'll be, it'll be, and because he's an old curmudgeon, you know it'll be a, an Ob- if that's possible Obama on steroids. I oy vey, how dangerous could that be? But the problem is, is that you have all these people out there who are supporting that message. That's the scary part. It's not that they're supporting Bernie. It's not that they, now that looking back, because they're supporting Bernie, it's not because they're supporting Bernie or they were supporting Obama. It's because they were support over Hillary, by the way, who this ter- this time around, because last time she didn't move farther to the left. This time around, she's like, well, I'm going to, you know, head Bernie off the pass at the pass and I'm going to move farther to the left. So this whole notion of a socialist message, that th- that's what all of these people are latching on to. You know, uh, social class warfare, the rich versus the poor, the middle class is left to fend for themselves in the middle. And that's why they're disappearing. You know, most of the middle class is not getting up into the rich category because of all the the regulations and taxes and and, and policy that, that prevents them from doing that. They're moving down the economic ladder into the poor sector. So now there's this there's this huge class warfare which is nothing more than a socialist, a socialistic and a communistic tactic. And these people have fallen for it. They love the socialist message because they believe that, oh yeah, it's the rich fault that everybody is poor. When if you ask them the basic question, when 
Has when have you ever gotten more money in your pocket when somebody has taken a rich person down? When somebody has taxed the rich more? When somebody has made uh, uh, the rich be less rich, when has that put more money in your pocket? Has it ever? And nobody can say, well, yeah, I got more money because the rich have got less. Nobody could ever honestly say that. Well, I mean, well, the, I, I suppose those those people on welfare who are receiving their welfare checks, like, yeah, I get my welfare check every month. You know, I get my food stamps. So if that means that they got to tax a rich person so I can get more in food stamps and more welfare benefits, oh, yeah, I'm for that. Uh-huh. But other than that, nobody ever gets to – even even the poor and on welfare, it isn't because they tax the rich more that they get more money in their pocket. Nobody can ever say, honestly, that they have they, they have improved their economic life. Because the rich got hammered on taxes. So if that's the case, then then why fall for this? Well, because it sounds good to everybody on that side of the aisle. They like they like to hear, yeah, 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 take them down a notch, Bernie. You go get those bankers. You go get those rich people. You go get those colleges. You go get you go get everybody who's got money. Get them all. Take their money. Well, what if it doesn't doesn't help you at all? I don't care as long as they get the, what's coming to them because they just bad. They bad, bad, bad. And they all need to go to jail anyway. So if we can't take them to jail, we just take their money. Well, it's not going to help you at all. I don't care. Because that that's that's the whole message. There isn't, you know. Look, we're gonna. You know, Bernie's out there, and now Hillary's out there doing the same thing, doing a Bernie, uh, talking about, well, you know, we're, we're going to you know, make college affordable. Now, at first, Bernie was out there, we, you know, we should make um, public colleges free for everybody. Now Bernie's out there saying, well, you know, I, I will work hard to make every single college free. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want my government paying the tuition costs for Harvard. Or Yale, or Brown, or Princeton, or Dartmouth, or any of those other private inst- inst- uh, uh, institutes of higher learning that have godly high tuition and room and board cost. Now, also understand that they're also talking about tuition. They're not talking about room and board. And in some you know, some places, room and board is almost as much as as the tuition is. Now, where was I seeing this? There's a college that had their room and board uh, cost was nearly eighteen grand a year. Now, eighteen eighteen thousand dollars just for living on campus and eating their food. That doesn't even include the tuition and books. I mean, no wonder it costs so much to go to college. These colleges are raking, you know, private colleges are raking it, you know, big education, that's what I call it. They're raking it in. And, and of course, you know, if, if government starts, you know, sure, government's going to limit how much they're going to pay, and these colleges are going to have to you know, capitulate. No, okay, so we can't charge 50 grand a year, so we're only going to be charged 45, but that's okay. And we, the taxpayers, will foot the bill, and they think it. Well, and everybody thinks, well, they get they just going to tax the rich to get to get free college. Well, you can't tax the rich for every. If you keep tossing on, so what is it? Uh, uh, two hundred. Uh, to, uh, well, uh, uh, was it three hundred and fifty billion or three hundred eighty billion in additional spending in Hillary's plan? That's just for public school. Now, can you imagine uh, for private? Can you imagine private what it would cost for if they wanted to, to try to bring in uh, private schools in, un, under this? You know, government will pay because all you see from the left is you know, well, these countries have free education. Well, what they fail to tell you is that yeah, their 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 nominal tax rate, income tax rate, is sixty, seventy, eighty percent, literally. You know, somebody's got to pay for this stuff, and it's going to be the taxpayer. But everybody's out there just loving the message that Sanders has. And the the message is a message of socialism. 
uh, pl- plain and simple. It's a message of socialism. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, so you know you can't get really bent out of shape uh, uh, because well, Sanders is is drawing kind of the same kind of crowds in the in the early days as uh, uh, as, as Barack Obama started to draw. In fact, in some cases, he's probably drawing more of a crowd. But it is, you know, it, it is what it is, and that that's that's the Sanders plan. Socialism. And you have to understand that that's the dangerous part. These people are out there supporting socialism. Yeah, we want government to take care of us. Yeah, we want bigger government. We've already got big government. We got huge government. But they're out there saying we want bigger government. We want government to be in more involved in our lives. We want government to, to help us with our lives on a daily basis. We want government to tell us what to do. Because, you know, we don't, we're, we're too stupid, too inane, too inept to, to do for ourselves. I, I, that's the message of socialism. And I know there are a bunch of people out there that are trying to say, you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, as well as, uh, uh, you know, the millennials, they can't seem to determine what the difference is between modern Democrats and socialism. And everybody's, you know, talking about, well, why can't they name the talk about the difference? Why can't they name the difference? The problem is, is that there is no difference. The modern Democratic Party is, is for the most part, nothing more than the Socialist Party. They're socialists. That's why they can't tell the difference between a Democrat and a socialist, because the Democrats are socialists. Look at Bernie Sanders. I know he's uh, supposed to be independent. But he's caucusing with the Democrats. He's trying to get the Democratic nomination. He's a Democrat. Plain and simple. So there is no difference between Democrats and socialists because they're one and the same. And this is what people are going out there. Now, if Hillary decides to be more of a socialist and come out being an an unadulterated socialist, then I guarantee you her numbers are going to start going up too, and so is her support. The leader in talk radio on the Internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 
In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. All right, folks, this is Rick Robinson with you. I want to tell you about some friends of mine from a company called Security Enforcement Specialists. When I ran my security agency for 12 years, I worked with one of these partners on a daily basis. He's been involved in this agency now, and with his other partner, they do have over 30 years of experience in the private security industry. If you own a business and you need someone to keep you or your customers or residents safe, then I highly recommend contacting Security Enforcement Specialists today. Give them a call at 405-703-1796. Again, that's 405-703-1796. Again, tell them Rick from K98 Talk sent you. Like I said, if you need the help, they are here for you. So make sure that you uh, go look them up, check them out, and see what they can do. The wrong way. Welcome to the place. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. To get up to like $68,000, my heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> The internet will never be the same. You're listening to K98talk.com. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. to the system that is already in place. In other words, when you have people start uh, uh, supporting something other than liberty and freedom and uh, a a democratic republic, uh, you're going to end up with some clashes. Now, throughout history, uh, you know, we've, we've had we've had super intelligent people throughout our history that tell us that, you know, after a certain period of time, uh, nations, be they city states or, or whole countries, um, they they tend to gravitate from the position 
of freedom and self-responsibility to that of being more dominated by a, 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 a dominating type of governmental system. And we can see it throughout history that, that often, and, and this is even biblical, I, and I don't know why people seem to think that we can, uh, not, I, I, I'm not being pessimistic here, but I just want, you see, if you understand what's going on, if you know the truth, now I mentioned this yesterday, if you know the truth, you will know how to make the necessary corrections that will actually work. And this is the truth. Humankind, human nature, has been that when they get absolute or total or, you know, freedom, that eventually there there comes a time when generations past who first fought and got that freedom, those that posterity will begin to demand... Somebody else take care of them because they get spoiled. And and frankly, look, you know, we're not well. What are we like third, third into the third, fourth generation since World War Two? Yeah, you know, World War Two um, veterans. You know, they're they're basically great grandparents now, and they're dying off like nobody's business. You know, we're, we're losing them fast simply because they're just old. You know, late eighties and above. But they, they understood what freedom was about. You know, pretty much just like those during the World War I generation and before that, because there was always something or, that they had to fight in order to preserve liberty and freedom. Now, since World War II, this country really has not been affected from any outside force to force us to take a look and, and appreciate freedom. So we've gotten to the point now where we're, we're now, now down to, you know, to the millennials, a fourth generation away, fourth or fifth uh, from World War II generation. They don't, they don't understand sacrifice because they really never had to do it. So when, when something, and we, they've gotten to this point, you know, because of our, our educational system, you know, everybody's special and you're special, you're super special and you deserve this and you deserve that. Even if you didn't work a day in your life, you still deserve this. This is what they're being told, you know, from, from kindergarten, preschool on up through, through, uh, high school and college. So, uh, this is what they're being told. This is what they've come to expect, and they're not getting it. So now they're saying, well, I want this, and I want that. And they're looking at their parents who worked very hard throughout their lives, and many of them have probably, you know, they probably started out buying that starter house, and then they moved up to the to the middle house until eventually, you know, kids are getting high school, and they have the big, you know, 3,000-square-foot house with um, two-and-a-half baths and a two-and-a-half-car garage with two new cars in the driveway, and these kids are growing up, and they see this. They forget all the hard work and sacrifice that their parents made in their early days, and all they see is what they are now in, in their in their teenage and college years, and they say, well, I want that 3,000-square-foot house, and I want it now. And they can't have it now, so they think, well, hey, Mr. Government Man, you need to give me some stuff because I deserve it. And one of the biggest things that, that we know throughout history is that uh, you know, a free people, a democratic type of people are in trouble. Their style of government is in trouble when the generalized population, when, when the bulk of the people, the majority of the people realize that they can vote themselves money from their treasury. And they do that by devolving from a free society to a less free society, i.e. they go from a, from a form of democracy to a form of socialism, to a form of communism. We're on that downward track right now. now. It doesn't mean that we have to end up there, but people have to understand that this has happened throughout the history of mankind. The Bible even talks about it. And even, even you know, the ancient state of Israel, when God said, well, I'll be your leader. And they said, no, God, you know, you give us, you know, you have your rules, but you give us too much freedom. We need, we need a king here that can take care of us. And God warned them, you don't want a king. It's not going to be a good idea. And they said, but God, we want a king. Everybody else has a king. We need a king. We need a king to take care of us. Well, I'm your king. No, we need an earthly king to take care of us because you're not always here, God. We can't see you. We need somebody to take care of us right here that we can see and go to every day. And God just said, 
fine. You don't want to listen to me. It's a bad idea, but here, there you go. There's a king. You know, I'll be proven right. And sure enough, God was proven right. You, know, you get a bad king or two, get a bad president or two. You know, you get, you get a bad potentate or two and everything goes to hell. And this is kind of the thing that, we, that you know, that, that we're dealing with. You know, we had a bad president, uh, uh, Carter, and we got a good one. And we got a, you know, a so-so one in, in, in Herbert Walker Bush. And then we got another bad one. You know, people look back and say, well, he was fun though, huh? Yeah, yeah, he may have been fun, but he was very, rather damaging. And then we got another so-so president. I know some people are real big George G.W. Bush fans. I am not a big G.W. Bush fan, but he was a hell of a lot better than than a, than a, a Al Gore, President Gore, or President Kerry. I can tell you, a hundred times better than either one of those guys. But he was, no, he, you know, his first term, he was not my first choice. But again, he was a hundred times better than uh, uh, an Al Gore. And that, then we get, you know, a, 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 a president who's totally devastating to our way of life in our nation as our government is, is uh, set up. And now we have all these crowds of people who are embracing socialism right out in the open. You know, Obama kind of, you know, he didn't admit out in the, you know, brazenly that he was a socialist. Bernie Sanders does. He's not hiding from it. Not at all. And people are embracing his message. So that's what I'm talking about. And that's the truth that you need to know and understand. So you can effectively deal with it and do something about it. It's not a hopeless situation. Not by a long shot. Not yet. We're, we're, we're approaching that point of no return. But uh, we haven't gotten there yet. So we still have time to reverse course. Or at least change course. Anyway. Welcome back. My fellow Americans and fellow freedom lovers all across the globe, it is I, of course, your lovable host, El Rod, and I'm still coming to you live from my Bunker Eyes home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is live free or die. It is not big government or bust. It is Tuesday, August the 11th in the year of our Lord, 2015. We're in the second hour of this wonderful program. I think it's wonderful. And if I say it's wonderful, then it is. The number that you can call this evening if you wish to join me and speak your mind live is uh, toll-free 603-835-3224. That's 603-835-3224. If you're a liberal, go ahead and call. I'm not, I'm not going to hate you or dish you if you're a liberal and you call. I'll put you, you know, I'll give you a full segment if that's what it takes. But... <laughs> In any case, uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton has um, gone out there and she's, you know, it looks like she's picking a um, a Republican candidate on a daily basis to to attack. And this time she picked. You know, she keeps it, I think it was yesterday. She wasn't she kind of she kind of meekly attacked Donald Trump. Well, <laughs> that's probably the wrong person that you want to attack because uh, Donald will just unload all barrels on you. You know, if, if <laughs> I look at it this way, Donald Trump is a battleship. And, you know, he's got those three turrets of 16 inch guns. Uh, well, as well as all the the smaller guns, and if you come trying to attack Donald Trump, Donald Trump will more than likely just unleash every single gun <laughs> on the on that on the Trump battles the battleship Trump on you. I, it's just the way he. I, I I you know Americans they 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 seem to be liking that in him. Again, brash, no holds barred, no hold back, and just unload. You know, I, I I do the same. In fact, I would keep just, I would just continually unload on Hillary Clinton. And, and they, they cannot leave out Bernie Sanders. I know, you know, everybody thinks, well, you know, Bernie's he's not the, the leading guy and blah, blah, blah. Just unload on the Democrats, period. 
That includes Obama. That includes, you know, Kerry, you know, Secretary Kerry. That includes, uh, you know, Schumer. And, and, and uh, that includes, um, you know, the, the, the one-eyed man from, from Nevada, Harry Reid. Just constantly unload all your guns on those folks. You know, just keep them on the defensive. And every time they try to go on the offensive, you shoot them down. I mean, you just unload on them. And that's exactly what Scott Walker did to Hillary Clinton. Because Hillary was out there talking about how Scott Walker, you know, uh, doesn't really care so much about uh, uh, higher education. In fact, you know, she's out there, you know, uh, uh, touting her 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 college plan to put it in quote unquote in reach of everyone. The new college compact, as she's calling it. And she was she went after uh, Scott Walker basically to say that, you know, w- Walker's state was terrible for higher education. And for for its citizens of Wisconsin and Scott Walker just unloaded on her. Yeah, hey, Hillary, yeah, my state is so bad that I have frozen in-state tuition rates for four years for college while you were charging $225,000 or more just to show up at a college campus to give a 30-minute speech. Boom. That's what you got to do to her every single freaking time. She opens her mouth. You you put a shell in there. Now, now I know somebody's going to say, "What do you mean? Are you advocating shooting Hillary Clinton?" No, not with real. Obviously, a, a you know a, a battleship is shooting some big shells, and it's not going to fit in her mouth. Obviously, so I'm not advocating that you're actually shooting any any type of real ordinance at, at Mrs. Clinton. I'm just it, words. Fire words back at her. Words that are truthful. Words that are that that can be devastating to her way of thinking. Just so people understand the differences and understand that she is just totally out there and wrong on just about every subject you can possibly think of that has to do with what we're going through as a nation right now. She's just wrong. I don't I, I don't know actually where Clinton is right on any of the major subjects that that uh, that uh, topics that face our country right now. I, I don't think she's on the right side of anything. I don't. I don't. I, I'm I'm trying to think of one right now. There, it's uh, there isn't one. But you know, hey, it's it's um. But you got to you got to keep the pressure up. You have got to keep the pressure up on Miss um, Clinton because if you don't, then she's going to be able to sneak in some stuff that that can do you know Republican candidates some some damage and, and get people twisted in their thinking. They think yeah those Republicans are bad, but if you just take what you, all you got to do, you don't even just. Take her record and keep firing shots at her. And then every time she opens her mouth, do what Scott Walker did and just turn it around back on her and fire it right back at her. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay, Hillary. Yeah. You think my state is awful for higher education and people can't afford it? Well, I've frozen college tuition for in-state school for the past four years. So in other words... I've made sure that it isn't costing our students any more to go to a state school here in Wisconsin while you're out there charging $225,000 to these colleges just for showing up. Now, who's going to pay for that? Well, you're not going to make it up by selling tickets at the auditorium door. So it has to come out of what? The tuitions and fees that students are charging. And if... And, and, you know, if I if I were if I were a Republican governor of a in 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 your state in a state school, I you know if it's within your your constitute your state constitution for you to do this, I would definitely make sure you put a cap on what 
state colleges can spend on having outside speakers come in. Because that two hundred and you know uh, two hundred thousand dollars for a speech for at a college. Who even thinks of doing? Most people, you know, they, they charge maybe you know if they're a big name, maybe they'll charge thirty or forty thousand or maybe fifty thousand, and most of that will will go to some sort of charity. And and a lot of times you, uh, you'll see them give it. Even even liberals sometimes you'll see them give it back to the the school uh, for for a particular program or, or something. But uh uh-uh, Miss Hillary, no, she takes it home to Bill and say, here, Bill, here's my contribution for this week. No, because Bill's out there, yeah, yeah, I charge half a million dollars for a speech. I got bills to pay, (laughs) you know. I I got to be able to fly all over the place on uh, you know, on on these orgy planes and orgy islands and all that kind of stuff, and 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 I gotta be able to go anywhere that Hillary goes, and and Hillary's gotta be able to go anywhere. I don't take her everywhere, but you know she's because uh, <laughs> I don't want her on the on the planes, but you know on on the island, but uh, other places that we can go together, we gotta go. We gotta go first class too. No, you can't catch us in coach. No, we got to be in first class or business class or something up there in the front of the plane. And it's got to be a big plane because we got to have room. I know it may cost a lot for tickets for a pair of us, but you know, hey, and plus not, not to mention, you know, we got to pay for our daughter, uh, you know, uh, Chelsea. I know she's, she's getting over a half million dollars a year to run, help run our foundation, 600 grand to be exact. And she's got that $10 million spread in New York City for her and her husband and her and my, my only grandchild. <laughs> So yeah, we gotta you know we we gotta get this money because we got bills. I got two houses, you know, two expensive homes and 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 places to go and people to see and places to play. You know, it, it's it's expensive being Bill and Hillary Clinton. I'm telling you. So I got charge this kind of money in order for me to pay our bills. And Hillary, you know, she's out there. She's got her own money and she you know she helps contribute sometimes, although she doesn't really need to because I I earn so much. But you know, we put us together. We're a powerful duo. And I tell you, we're a money making machine. We just got we got too many bills. And now she's out there running for president. You know, she got she she got to be able to pay for some of that stuff too. Can't have everything coming out of the uh, uh, you know the, the campaign fund because <laughs> some of it's kind of private. You know, and uh, if you pay for private stuff out of your campaign fund, that's kind of a no no now. So we gotta we gotta you know keep up our appearances and and the things that we like to do. You know, it's just, yeah, I, I got, <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's just fun being a Clinton. I'm telling you, it's really fun. It's expensive, but it's fun. So as long as we can pay those bills and, and the way we pay those bills is by charging this outrageous fee for speaking. You know, she gets a quarter million. I get a half million because I was president. And of course, you know, she becomes first woman president. Well, by the time she gets out, she could be charging more than me. You know, million. I'm not going to complain. She gets three, three quarters of a million dollars for a speech. I get a half million dollars for a speech. Hell, you know, with all the money that we've made since, uh, leaving the White House the first time, uh, that'll be, yeah, that'll be a cakewalk. That'll be, that'll be, you know, it's chump change. I'm telling you, this is what we're doing here. It's, uh, because, you know, we want the big bucks. Yeah, that stupid $400,000 a year salary, that ain't nothing. It's what you make after that counts. <laughs> Cause we still gonna have those bills after she leaves the White House. I'm telling you. That is the reason that they, that they, they're just greedy. They're greedy. Now, I, I, yeah, like I said, you know, whether you like the truth or not, I'm, I'm, I'm honest about it. There are, you know, plenty of liberals who give speeches in college campi all over the country who donate, a, you know, a good portion or if not all of their, of their honorarium or speaking fee uh, to charity or back to the college in which they speak in some form or another. But not it doesn't appear that the Clintons have ever done that. And they charge an outrageous sum. So if I was a governor of a state, and if it was in the purview of my power of that particular state within the, in the confines of their constitution, and if I could limit what a college can spend... I'll put a cap on what they can spend for a speaker. I would do that. Now, I, because I'm not, a, I don't, you know, I don't live in all 50 states, so I don't know how each state can possibly do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, the governors of those states should know. But I, you know, if I was Scott Walker, I'd be going back to Wisconsin saying, you know what, why don't we just, not, not only did I freeze tuition 
But within the within the confines of our state constitution and our state laws, I put in a bill. I asked for a bill that I can sign that would limit or cap, you know, uh, speaking fees at, at 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 state colleges. Now, you know, private colleges, you know, you guys are private. You can you know do whatever you want, obviously, and they do. Um, but state colleges, you know, we're gonna put this limit on there. You can't be charging. You know, our, our kids a half million dollars or whatever it is, you know, or two, a quarter million dollars for, for a 30 or 40 minute speech. And it, I, I would like to see, uh, I, oh, geez, I think I got, I have, um, uh, I saw something, my newsfeed about, about, uh, Black Lives Matter trying to, trying to, to infiltrate, uh, the Clinton, the Clinton event here in New Hampshire. And the Black Lives Matter were shut out because, you know, obviously you can't you can't ask Hillary a real question that is going to make her look bad if she answers it. So the only way you can prevent somebody from asking the question is you don't let them ask, ask the question. And how are you going to not allow a question you don't want to that, you know, is going to be asked that you don't want to ask? Well, you don't allow them into the event so they can get within microphone or earshot to ask the question. And, uh, that's, that's what they, uh, I'll have to look for, I don't think that that is in my paper pile at the moment. Um, but I will have to, do, 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 no, well, I'll, uh, I'll try and find it and bring it after the break. But, uh, look, when it comes to, like I said, when it comes to, to defeating the left, you can't be wimpy, mamby, pamby. All you gotta do is just go after them. If they say something, then you just turn it around and fire all barrels, all guns on your battleship right back at them. Totally destroy their argument. Destroy them. Because after all, that's what they're trying to do to each and every Republican candidate. No, they're all about the personal destruction campaign. So we got to do the same thing back, but better. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-616-8010. That's 1-800-616-8010. Again, 1-800-616-8010. Call now. Did you ever look at the stains in your coffee cup and then realize that's exactly what happens to your teeth? Power Swabs is the five-minute solution to get your teeth white without visiting the dentist. This is Ben Gordon with Power Swabs, and if your teeth are stained from coffee, tea, or smoking, all it takes is five minutes with Power Swabs. In five minutes, you'll see an average of two shades whiter teeth, and in seven days, six shades. It's clinically proven to whiten natural teeth as well as caps and veneers. The secret is a tooth detergent that was developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts stains off of your teeth. Best of all, there's no messy strips or trays that you have to leave in your mouth for an hour. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and you're done. To try Power Swabs risk-free, call 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. I guarantee your bright white smile will have your friends talking about how great you look. Try it risk-free today. 1-800-291-5140. That's 1-800-291-5140. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. simply because I am a talented broadcast professional. Uh, it took years to get to this to this level of proficiency. Uh, just saying, you know, it didn't happen overnight. You know, this is so, no, no, I know a lot of people are probably out there saying, well, if Rod can do it, I can do it. It's not something you can do overnight. You got to practice. Kind of like, you know, uh, you know, getting those nimble fingers and uh, stretching your fingers in order to practice the piano, and you got to keep practicing all those keys. Same thing. You got to practice, practice, practice before you can actually get on the air. I'm just, you know, it it takes it takes learning. You know, you have to learn all the, how to do all this stuff, and thus, when you've had years and years and years of learning and practice and dedication, then you too shall be a professional broadcast specialist um uh just like myself just saying you can do it you just have to be dedicated but (laughs) i know that there are some people out there man he's just really arrogant isn't he honey um they don't they don't understand the nature of being facetious but uh some of you will and most of you that will will be on the right side of the political aisle uh, anyway, welcome back, folks. Again, the number is toll-free, 603-835-3224, uh, if you wish to join me here live on the program. Here's the story from IJReview.com. Boston activists who are part of the Black Lives Matter social movement, you know, every time I read that, Or hear that social movement. It causes me to pause because it is some of the biggest BS that I have ever heard. It's not a social move. It's a it's not a social movement. It is a social hijacking and it is domestic terrorism. Yeah, I call it like I see it. Black Lives Matter are a domestic terrorism. Nonviolent terrorist group. 
We want to call, you know, you know, if we're going to start saying every, everybody's a terrorist, well, you know, the, the, yeah, for now, Black Lives Matter seems to be, uh, they seem to be pretty much nonviolent, and all the violence that happens in certain places I don't think is because of Black Lives Matter. Uh, I, you know, they, they may be instigating some of it. I don't know. I'm not on the ground in some of those places. But for the most part, especially when they're doing this type of interrupting, uh, they're nonviolent. So they're a nonviolent terrorist organization. And, you know, as many liberal ultra liberal left wing groups are many of them are nonviolent terrorist groups because they they terrorize people you don't see a bunch of you know conservatives running up to somebody else's microphone and interrupting them and keeping them from giving a speech or doing whatever that, that they came to do it's it always seems to be on the left that's a terrorist type of tactic in my book but anyway so it's not a social movement. It's a, it's a, it's social terrorism, nonviolent social terrorism. And uh, no, a movement was uh, uh, the civil rights with Dr. Martin Luther King. That was a movement. This is not a movement. But anyway, I digress. Black Lives Matter social movement, social terrorist movement, uh, planned to interrupt Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton at a New Hampshire campaign event Earlier today, according to the New Republic, which exclusively reported the group's plan, which included the following question, because they wanted to ask her, they wanted to, they wanted to ask Hillary this question. Y'all, y'all see what I did there? I said ask instead of ask. Uh, yeah, yes, I know how to pronounce ask, but it just emphasizes what I wanted to say by saying, by speaking in the urban colloquialism, uh, ask this question. The activists said they plan to ask Sarah. I'm sorry. Let me reread that. The activists said they plan to ask several questions, including, can you give at least one tangible example of how you expect to reverse the health and human services disaster you orchestrated in impoverished urban non-white communities through the domestic war on drugs a policy that you've championed as flotus and as senator whoa now uh, you got a leftist group attacking a leftist candidate for uh, well as they put it white supremacy and you know hillary's you know she was out there before in in, in her first presidential campaign saying i ain't no ways tired I've come too far. (laughs) Well, I guess Black Lives Matter think you ain't come far enough. (laughs) Uh, um, I probably shouldn't speak in that urban dialect. I could probably be uh, construed as being condescending. But um, and I probably should stop using big words like that. Yeah, I did have somebody once tell me that. They, 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 Rod, you, you, you sound too educated when you use big words. You can't use big words. And, and all you're doing is trying to show off. Well, like show off what? I, I'm showing off that I had that I actually actually got a halfway decent education. Yeah, see what I did there. So I'm supposed to be ashamed that I actually got a decent education and I actually learned something. And I'm supposed to be ashamed of of the fact that I kept learning after I got out of out of out of, uh, uh, you know, high school and college. And I continued to expand my vocabulary and I continued to expand my uh, my knowledge base in, in different subjects. I'm supposed to be ashamed of that. I don't sit around thinking of big, fancy words to say. I mean. I real fully realize that sometimes I need to sort of dumb down my talk because a lot of people, especially younger generation, they don't understand. You know, if you if you have a word that's more than two syllables long, they'll just look at you with you know deer eyes and go, "Huh?" But I I don't try to sound over. I don't I don't sound overly edgy. I don't. Look, you lefties out there who who are in in academia, you guys try to sound like you're overly educated. 
Yeah, now of course you don't say that you're overly educated, but that's exactly what you are because you know you got. I have a PhD in this and a PhD in that and a doctorate in this and a doctorate in that. And I got a master's here and a master's there. Oh yeah, in in that final degree, it's just a little bachelor's degree. It don't mean nothing. You get the you get look you know you, you get you get that a lot, and I know I'm I you know I'm uh, I'm African American, so I'm not supposed to be that intelligent according to. You know, left. I'm, I'm not. I'm not supposed to have a high IQ. I'm supposed to be some, you know, some. I, I should be. I should be trying to uh, perfect my rhyme and rhythm so I can be a rapper. And that's not, you know, rapper is not for those of you in Rush Limbaugh's Rio Linda. That's not the thing that you put around like a candy bar or something. No, I'm, ta- you know, ra- I, I'm sorry. It's not a rapper anymore. You're a hip hop artist. I should be perfecting my skills to be hip hop, I guess. But anyway, over the weekend, the movement's activists shut down Bernie Sanders rally in Seattle. But the plan in New Hampshire was not initially as as successful, according to uh, CNN reporter Dan Marika. And this is what Dan Marika uh, tweeted. He tweeted, the doors to, to HR, Hillary Rodham Clinton, HRC. This is what they call it, HR, HRC. She could be a hip-hop artist with the, the HRC. You know, if somebody, I'm going to put out a request. If somebody can put the words of Hillary Clinton from her, Hillary Clinton, and, and put it into a hip-hop or rap song, I'd greatly appreciate it. You know, we'll call her the uh, uh, the HR. We'll call her HRC, uh, Master HRC. You know, they don't use Master anymore, do they? Uh, you know, we'll put her and Iggy Azalea together. How's that? Now, the doors to uh, HRC's event have been closed by USSS due to capacity per an aid. In other words, they're saying the reason why Black Lives Matter, uh, Black Lives Matter protesters didn't get in is because. They reach capacity, which is not true. Uh, Clinton aid, another tweet from Dan Marika. Clinton aid confirms that an overflow room was set up at her keen event. Uh, unclear if Black Lives Matter folks got in. Ob- evidently, they didn't. Now, B- <laughs> Black Lives Matter Boston chapter said it made contact with Clinton staff. Huge thanks to everyone. Uh, tweeting about uh, hole up Hillary, H O L L U P H I L L A R Y, hole up Hillary. Um, so they are they are working with us. Now Clinton staff went to meet with the activists, but pooled media will be in the uh, uh, in the room. I guess so. They'll 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 get their opportunity, I suppose. Um. But in any event, evidently they didn't get to get to ask ask their question. So that is the story that uh, that I wanted to, that I saw that I wanted to bring to you about Black Lives Matter not being able to interrupt Hillary Clinton because she just wasn't gonna have any of it because you know her handlers they they don't want her to have to answer a question that uh, they don't. Want her to have to answer. Plain and simple. Hey, Seattle. From the Washington Times. Seattle, Washington. Now this is going to piss off lots of people. But all I can say is, is don't, don't, don't live in a liberal city or a liberal state like this. But Seattle... Seattle, Washington made it official last night, according to WashingtonTimes.com, trying to tax its way into a lower crime rate. Yeah, yes. Seattle has decided that in order to lower the crime rate in their city, they're going to tax potential criminal activity. And how did they end up doing this? How did they determine this? What, What did they decide to tax? to try to prevent potential criminal activity and lower the crime rate. Well, the city council voted 8 to 0 to approve a bill that would impose taxes on the sales of both 
guns, as in firearms, and ammunition. Now, guns, they are going to ta- add a tax of $25, of $25 per weapon. And ammunition, depending on the caliber, will be taxed an additional 2 to $0.05 cents per round. In other words, 2 to $0.05 cents per bullet. Again, depending on the caliber. With the money designated for research into gun violence and other anti-gun programs. So they, they want to tax people who want guns. You know what this is really going to do? This is going to drive everybody who wants to buy, buy a firearm and their ammunition out of the city. It's, it's not going to stop people from getting guns. Either law-abiding uh, citizens or otherwise. Nefe- for, you know, people who are looking to, to, to get a weapon for nefarious activity. They're, oh, jeez, I did it again. Uh, a big word. For people who are looking to um, uh, do bad stuff, they're not going to bother to pay this gun tax. So even though this money is is designated to try to get people to not want guns, because that's what anti-gun programs, that's what it's all about, kind of like anti-smoking. You know, they they use they in in, in many states and they use part of the 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 over overly high cigarette tax to uh to fund programs that try to get people to quit smoking. Well, they're going to use these these ridiculous taxes here uh, to try to get people not to buy guns and not to want guns and to give up their Second Amendment rights, but and to res- and and to, to do research into gun violence. Why would a city want to do research into gun violence? They don't want to know the truth behind it. You know, uh, violent gun, real gun violence. Anyway, they don't. They don't want to know the truth that the vast majority of gun crimes are committed by criminals who did not obtain their firearm in a legal manner. So no manner or no amount of new laws pertaining to firearms is going to prevent the criminal from getting that firearm. And, and especially in this country, if you're, even if they try to, even if they ban the, look, even when we had a, a so-called ban against, uh, uh, you know, a, a so-called assault weapons, criminals still got them. That's the dirty little secret. The only people who couldn't get new ones were law-abiding citizens. Criminals still got them. And, and, and which is why the police started to stepping started stepping up the type of weaponry that they obtained because criminals still had the powerful stuff and were still obtaining it and getting it even though that there was a ban on it so this whole notion that they're going to, that there's going to be a uh, that there's going to be some sort of drop in violence because they're going to tax guns well it's only going to it, it's it may prevent some law-abiding citizens from purchasing at least as many or as you know many guns or as many rounds as they as they originally wanted because you know it's going to take money out of their pocket or they're just going to abandon going to the stores in Seattle and and, and or possibly even in Washington and just you know go go to Oregon or Montana or something where uh, stuff like that is not as bad. And uh, that's, that's, well, look, I, you know, you're always going to have these liberal idiots who are going to want to try to tell you that they're attacking the, the symptom. The symptom is guns, having guns out there. No, 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 no. Uh, that, that may be a symptom. It is not the cause. The cause are various uh one of which is lack of opportunity driving people into crime and if they're going to do crime they want to do it as as efficiently as possible while they stay alive and out of jail so that means that they need to arm up um but uh yes they they don't want to tell you that or or understand that or get to that point because if they if 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 they understood that and actually emoted or if they actually said that type of stuff, then um, 
you and I would, well, the left out there would definitely fully understand that they're on the wrong side of the whole issue. And they, and many of them would probably drop the whole issue of wanting to take away our guns in the first place. Uh, here's something from The Hill. Uh, TheHill.com is saying that uh, Hillary Clinton would lose the swing state of Iowa. Yeah, I well, you know, it's it's a uh, I I I guess if it came down to the, what they're talking about is the election. If the election were held were held today, Hillary Clinton would lose the swing state of Iowa to several potential Republican opponents. Now this this flies in the face of of Hillary beating every all 20 uh, GOP contenders for the presidency. All of a sudden, oh, geez, all of a sudden, all of a sudden that's changed. So she would lose to several potential Republican to a new Democratic leaning company. The public policy polling PPP survey released earlier today showed Clinton getting the uh, the worst of matchups against uh, candidates of uh, Marco Rubio, Scott Walker, Mike Huckabee, and Dr. Ben Carson. Now, the results are likely to be of particular concern to Democrats, given that President Obama carried the Hawkeye State during both his uh, both of his election victories in in '08 and uh, 2012. Clinton is the dominant front runner in the race for the Democratic nomination, while Republicans are locked in a dogfight. Well, not. Not really. Now, other so in other words, there's uh, as uh, there there are four contenders, and uh, yeah, the funny thing is, is that all four of those contenders are right now in the in the in the top ten, right? So, and and this comes after the GOP debate, and you've got Dr. Carson in there beating Hillary Clinton in Iowa. Now, I, look, I'm going to have to, well, I know it's just a stupid, silly poll, and it's still early. Uh, and, of course, it could go the other way really, really, really fast for Dr. Carson or any of the other candidates. Uh, but, um, yeah, yeah, I didn't think, you know, good old Dr. Ben would be up there. But evidently, Iowans like what Dr. Carson is saying and how he's saying it. Now, I would tend to believe that, again, this is a Democratic-leaning uh, polling company, the public policy polling uh, company. I would I would tend to believe that there are other Republican hopefuls that would also give Clinton a run for her money, including the Donald. Uh, now, because now, it's pretty it's pretty odd that the top contender or leading GOP or uh, would not be in this poll. So it really makes the poll kind of suspect. Uh, I, I'm surprised that they haven't, well, because they've always said, uh, the left has always said that Jeb Bush was our, our best uh, chance of beating Hillary. But even though Jeb Bush was our best chance of beating Hillary, every poll that they did it showed Hillary easily beating Jeb Bush. Well, if Jeb Bush was easily built and uh, easily beat in every liberal poll out there against Hillary, then why the hell would we want Jeb Bush as our, as our nominee? Oh, he's your best chance. Oh, but he's going to lose. But he's still your best chance. So in other words, they were trying to tell us that it doesn't matter who you throw up there because Hillary is just so powerful, so strong, and so wonderful that she's going to be anybody you got. And Jeb is your only chance, but he's not going to. Even he can't do it. Well, he doesn't even appear on this public policy polling survey um, to beat Hillary. But yet, and still, we're still hearing, well, Jeb is, you know, from the left, we're hearing Jeb is probably your best bet. So in other words, they're telling us who they want as Hillary's opponent, if Hillary is the nominee, because they can beat Jeb. But they're afraid of many of the other Democratic um, contenders because they can beat Hillary. Or excuse me, the Republican contenders, because they can beat Hillary. They can they can beat her down. Now, the results are likely to be of particular concern to Democrats, uh, like a, like uh, I said. So other polls are also showing Clinton well ahead in Iowa of her rivals for the Democratic nomination. 
But the new survey is likely to add to the sense that Clinton could be vulnerable in a general election. Ba- well, could be. Did they just it, it could be? How about she's already vulnerable? And that if we actually had an administration that was interested in a, in, the, in a Department of Justice that was actually interested in justice, she wouldn't even make it. Uh, to the November election because she'd be indicted and, and on trial for some or going to trial for for crime, uh, you know, high crimes and misdemeanors. While she was secretary of state and that, that doesn't even include anything else that she possibly, uh, you know, could have been involved in. Before or after. Well, I mean, the, the, the well, the email server thing is really kind of after as well, but. So you got, uh, uh, and and I'm thinking that if they've got those four, Rubio, Walker, Huckabee, and Carson uh, ahead of her in Iowa, I think that maybe Clinton's got some other problems as well. So we will have to see. But in any case, that sound means that we are out of time. And I will be back here next week because I have a speech tomorrow and some family business for the rest of the week. So until then, enjoy the best of Rod Show for the rest of the week. I'm Rod Echo. It's been the Rod Echo Show. I'm out. Leader in talk radio on the internet, right here on K98talk.com. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. And then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on wash and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602.